Lady and the Lion. Once upon a time, there was a merchant who had three daughters. He loved them dearly, especially his youngest one, Amelia, for she was his favorite. One day, as he was leaving for a long voyage to conduct his work, he asked his daughters what they would like him to bring back to them. I would love a beautiful set of shiny pearls. I would like a set of sparkling diamonds. Dear father, I would like a beautiful singing nightingale. Very well, my children. If I can manage to get it, then you shall have it. He bid farewell to his daughters and left. The merchant bought the pearls for his eldest daughter and diamonds for his second daughter. He searched everywhere for a singing nightingale, but it was all in vain. This worried him as Amelia was his favorite and he did not want to upset her. His venture brought him to a forest. He went on and on till he found a magnificent castle with a tall tree at the side of it. Upon that tree sat a beautiful nightingale singing melodiously. Ah, I have got to you at the right time. Go up that tree and get that nightingale for my daughter. Just as the servant was about to approach the tree, a lion jumped out from behind the tree and roared so loud that the leaves on the tree trembled. Who dares to steal my nightingale? I will eat you up, the thief. My apologies, O oh mighty lion. I did not know that the bird is yours. Please spare my life. I shall pay you a heavy ransom for my mistake. Nothing can save you unless you promise to give me the first thing that meets you when you return home. If you agree, I shall spare your life and give you the bird as well. But, but, what if it is my Amelia? Do not worry, sir. It is not necessary that your daughter will be the first to meet you. It might just be a cat or a dog. The merchant had been persuaded. He took the nightingale and made his promise to the lion and left to go back home. When the merchant reached home, his youngest daughter Amelia ran towards him and hugged him tightly. After seeing that he brought the nightingale, she was filled with joy. The merchant could not rejoice and began to cry. <laughs> My dear Amelia, it has cost me for I had to make a promise to the Lion Prince that I will send him the first person I meet. I fear that he will tear you to pieces when he has you in his power. The merchant explained all that had happened. Oh, father, a promise is a promise and it must be fulfilled. I must go to the Lion Prince. No, please, he will kill you. Nothing can change what's written in my fate. Isn't that what you taught us, father? The merchant was taken back. Do not worry, father. My heart tells me that I will be fine, and the heart is always right. Also something that you have taught us. The next day, Amelia left for the forest while her father and sisters cried as they waved her goodbye. I hope the Lion Prince is kind to her, and we get to see your little sister again. The lion was actually an enchanted prince. By day, he was a mighty lion, as were all of his followers, and by night, they would transform back into human form. When Amelia reached the forest, she was received kindly and was taken to the castle on a golden carriage led by lions. When Amelia entered the castle, she was welcomed by a pride of lions who carried many gifts for her. Welcome, my beautiful queen. I see that your father has stood by his promise, and I am glad that you were the first to see him as you are very beautiful. I shall be honored to have you as my wife. I am greatly flattered, but I do not share your happiness, as I fear that you are a lion. Just then, a ray of moonlight shone through the window, and the Lion Prince magically transformed, leaving a handsome prince before her. I am actually a prince and we have been bound by an enchantment that makes us lions by day. Amelia smiled, for she was happy and in love with the Lion Prince. Amelia agreed to marry the prince, and the wedding was held at once with due magnificence. They lived happily together as lions would, sleeping through the day and staying up all night. One day, 
The Lion Prince came up to her and said, There is a festival at your father's house tomorrow to celebrate the marriage of your eldest sister. If you wish, the lions could escort you. That would be so lovely. I am so eager to see my father. Then I shall call for the lions immediately, and they will take you there in grand style. But, my prince, I will not go alone. You will come along as well. My queen, it is too dangerous. For even if a small beam of light touches me, I will turn into a dove and would have to fly about for seven years. Do not worry. I will make sure to keep you safe and protect you from every ray of light. And thus, the prince and the princess set out to go for the wedding. The merchant and his daughters were happy at the sight of Amelia and were delighted to learn about the Lion Prince. They welcomed the Lion Prince with love. The princess had a great hall built with walls so thick that no ray of light could penetrate through them. This was where the lion was to retire when the torches and candles were kindled. But since the wood was fresh, it split, causing a crack so small that when the procession of people with torches and lights came back from the wedding, a small ray of light about the size of a hair fell upon the lion prince. Within a second, the Lion Prince turned into a dove. When Amelia returned, she saw nothing but a white dove sitting there. For the next seven years, I will have to fly about, and at every seventh step, I shall drop a white feather. And if you follow it, you can set me free. Princess Amelia followed the white dove as a white feather fell at every seventh step to show her the way. As the seven years nearly passed, Amelia followed the trail of white feathers all the way without any rest. Oh, I am so glad that these seven years are almost over. We shall soon be free of our troubles. But it was long before Princess Amelia and the Prince would be free. One day, the white feathers ceased to drop, and Amelia was worried. A man cannot help me with this. Princess Amelia climbed up a tree and called out to the sun. Oh, sun, so bright you shine from valleys to mountain peaks, from land to mine. Do you know where I can find a white dove of mine? No, little child. I have not seen a white dove. But take this little casket and use it when you are in dire need. Thank you so much. Princess Amelia went on and on looking for her prince till night fell. When the moon shone out, she went up to the moon and asked, Oh, beautiful moon, you shine all night over field and forest. Have you seen a white dove flying by? No, I haven't. But here is an egg. Crack it open when you are in need. Princess Amelia thanked the moon, went on looking for the prince. As the night wind blew, she asked, You blow among all the trees and leaves. Have you seen a white dove flying by? I have seen the white dove. It has flown away to the Caspian Sea, where it has regained its form of a lion and is fighting with a mighty dragon, who is an enchanted princess named Asteria. Here is a magic wand. Go on to the Caspian Sea and point it towards the dragon and say, Abra Kadabra. After this, the lion will be able to master the dragon, and they both will regain their human form. Next, you will find a majestic winged griffin who dwells by the Caspian Sea. Hop onto its back with your beloved prince, and it will carry you back across the sea. Drop the magic wand when you are in the middle of the ocean and out of it will immediately spring up tall trees which will show the griffin the directions to cross the sea. Amelia thanked the wind and set out on her journey. When she reached the Caspian Sea, she found the Lion Prince and the dragon fighting. She immediately removed her magic wand and pointed it towards the dragon. Abracadabra! The magic from the wand hit the dragon and it dropped into the ground. The Lion Prince put his paw on the dragon's head and immediately returned to his human form. The dragon, too, returned to her human form and transformed into Princess Asteria. 
Just as they were free, Princess Asteria looked at the Lion Prince and fell in love. She immediately cast a spell on him, took the prince in her arms, and magically disappeared. No! Princess Amelia cried for her beloved prince, but just then a gentle breeze of wind passed, giving her courage. I will go wherever the winds shall blow, and I will go as long as the sun sets and rises over the horizon. I will search far and wide till I find my prince. She hopped onto the griffin's back and followed the direction of the wind. She went on and on till she came across a castle where the wind stopped blowing. Amelia understood that this is where her prince was. She thanked the griffin and then entered the castle. When she spoke to the people of the kingdom, they told her about the grand festival that was held to celebrate the wedding of the prince and princess. Oh, heaven help me! Just then, Amelia opened the casket, given by the sun, and out came a beautiful dress, as brilliant as the sun itself. She also cracked open the egg that the moon had given her, and out came a golden hen. She entered the castle wearing the dress, carrying the golden hen. Everyone looked at her with amazement, including the bride-to-be. Princess Asteria was so amazed by Amelia's dress and the golden hen, that she went up to her immediately. This dress is so magnificent. I would like to buy it from you along with the hen. You may have it, but in return, you must let me speak with the bridegroom in his chamber tonight. Princess Asteria was hesitant, but she wanted the dress and the hen so bad that she finally consented. Later that night, she ordered the Chamberlain to give the Lion Prince a sleeping draft. The prince who was nearby heard some murmurs and later asked the Chamberlain what it was all about. The Chamberlain confessed to the prince that he was ordered to slip in a sleeping draft in his drink as a poor girl was to be in the room with him that night. Pour the drink and keep it by my bed. That night, when the moon shone bright, Princess Amelia was taken to the chambers to speak with the prince. The Lion Prince, meanwhile, pretended to be asleep. For the past seven years, I have followed you as you flew around the world. I have been to the sun and moon and the four winds to look for you. I helped you master the dragon. Will you forget me now? He recognized the voice of his dear wife immediately. For the first time, I am truly free, for it has all been like a dream. Princess Asteria has cast a spell on me, leaving me to forget you, my love. But your love has blessed me and broken that spell. Oh, my prince, I have gone to the ends of the earth to find you. How glad am I to finally get you back. Let us hurry and get out of this place before the enchanted princess finds us. The prince and princess quietly snuck out of the castle, for they feared that the princess Asteria might catch them. They mounted the griffin who carried them over the Caspian Sea and took them back to their castle in the forest. When they reached home, all the lions turned to their human form and rejoiced. The lion prince couldn't thank Princess Amelia enough and loved her dearly, for it was her determination and will that had finally restored happiness in their lives.